I'd like to share with you some thoughts on the mainstream media beauty and fitness lie. You know, throughout history, you know, the very definition of beauty and the concept of fitness has constantly changed. You know, society and culture and economics and technology, they all played a major role in how we identify and then categorize aesthetic value or fitness level. And it's always been subjective. And for the most part, the peasant class probably paid little attention to the fashions of the nobility or the latest trend. And this is mainly related to the fact that before the turn of the 19th into the 20th century, most people were not influenced by a mainstream media giant, and nor did they possess the resources to indulge in non-essentials. But now, with the media onslaught of fabricated definitions of beauty, Americans are buying a superficial lie. With magazines and televisions, movies, celebrities, and beauty companies, they're all peddling a very disturbing product, and we just keep buying it and buying it and buying it. And now the most frightening part of this whole mess, in my opinion, is the age in which young Americans are indoctrinated into this mass consumerism and a very superficial value system. But I believe that there are really primarily three lies, and the most insidious is the skinny lie. A very dangerous and popular lie in America is that the modern, is the modern classification of skinny. Now, most extremes are unhealthy, and this includes the underweight and the overweight body type, but the media defines a desirable or healthy body as lean and flawless. But this beauty ideal is unattainable for most of us, and it's unsustainable for everyone. But I think more importantly, it's distorted the reality of what a healthy person looked like. In my opinion, women of all sizes, they suffer the most from this unhealthy cultural direction. But I'd also tell you this, that most top models, they're not how a fitness professional would even classify healthy. In fact, most models that I've worked with are underweight and they suffer from eating disorders and negative perception of physical self. But strangely, many of the overweight women that I have coached over the past few decades have the exact same problems. And this is so discouraging to me because none of these ladies are getting out of this media trap unscathed. And sadly, this has led to extreme actions, such as cosmetic procedures. That includes liposuction, gastric bypass, and even insulin, insulin abuse is a thing. Eating disorders like bulimia, anorexia, and binge eating, and more recent muscle dysmorphia, they're all products of warped body image. No surprise that this insanity has birthed the extreme alternative mentality, which is this, your body is perfect no matter what, but folks, that's just a new lie. Your body is not perfect no matter what. That's a bandwagon argument and a way for some people to justify unhealthy lifestyle or maybe live in excess. But to be clear, if you're carrying around excessive body fat, regardless if you are currently experiencing negative health consequences for all your behavior, then you're just as delusional as the ultra skinny person. Now, I understand that's a strong statement nowadays, and there are some that would be horrified by that concept that it's, that it's you know, you can't, it's, now it's not appropriate to say someone's overweight. But here's the bottom line. We should all strive to be the very best versions of ourselves, physically, mentally, and spiritually. But the second lie is the zero blemish lie. And cosmetics, man, they've existed for thousands of years, and they may be the oldest form of physical alteration to enhance your appearance or maybe your desirability. But, but the mainstream media has belungeoned our society to a pulp with makeups and creams and lotions and cosmetics. And I feel there are two parts to this lie. So let's start with the obvious one first. Manufacturers and ad agencies have set an ultra standard of facial beauty. Models are ridiculously perfect, and they represent a mere fraction of a fraction of a population. Now, when I say perfect, I am not advocating that these models look perfect. I am just pointing out that the mainstream media is telling us that that is what should be defined as perfect. The false promise is that you will look the same if, if you use a certain product or brand. Second, the insinuation is that beauty is external and these ads focus exclusively on superficial forms of beauty. So here's my next outrageous statement. I have met men and women who are not the apex of physical attraction, right? But once I got to know them, they became far more attractive to me. Why? Well, because they are exceptional people that add value to the lives of others, and this is simply beautiful. But sadly, this means we often give more grace to people who are physically attractive from the start. Well, I mean, if they conform to the modern definition of beauty. Because of the lie, both men and women in general, the general population, of course, they feel they should meet some kind of beauty standard. Now, the corrosive part, is when they look in a mirror and don't see the flawless reflection of trendy beauty. Now this leads to a potential loss of self-esteem, a feeling of inadequacy, and using words like plain and ugly to describe yourself, right? In your head. Now to that point, many years ago, 
uh, I was training a young female athlete, and she was an outstanding soccer player, probably college level at this point. She was remarkably fit, about 16 years old, and we worked together for many, many weeks, and our sessions were so positive. She had a really strong spirit. But on this one session, she was obviously not performing, and I felt like I had to ask her. I'm like, hey, where is your head right now? You usually kill this drill. And she was you know, quiet for a moment, and then she just asked me, like, point blank, do you think I'm ugly? Now, of course, as an experienced trainer, my shields went up immediately because you never know where a loaded question like that can lead. So I simply said, paraphrasing, you know, what I think uh, or what anyone else thinks is not the question. The real question is, do you think you're ugly and why? She replied with, uh, I think I'm sort of ugly. Not terribly ugly, but, you know, not as pretty as other girls. And I asked just who are these other girls and what's so beautiful about them? So she went on to list a half a dozen celebrities and a couple girls from school and how they're always perfect. Now, suffice to say, I did my best to remind her of true personal beauty, right? And encourage her to be her own special brand of beautiful. You know, I also did tell her about the lie, that nasty lie that she believed enough to ask me that question. Now, of course, we all go through a period of self-doubt and feelings of inadequacy, uh, but that was a little bit beyond that, right? You know, she's a 16-year-old athlete, peak physical condition. She had a really pretty look, uh, but she defined beauty just as the media programmed her. Unattainable, unrealistic, and superficial. That leads me to my next point, the fashion line. Not much of a beauty, but it's there. And as much as I enjoyed um, The Devil Wears Prada, you know, I find some components of the fashion industry to be so silly. There is uh, very little value in mainstream fashion as far as I'm concerned. But I know many people who find aspects of fashion to be a form of artistic expression and function, and that's fine. And I understand that part. But there are some strong ethical issues surrounding fashion. But the most notorious is the body image influence that we already explored. Now, the fashion industry has done more than just lie to us about beauty and social acceptance. They have altered human physiology. For fashion, technology is a powerful tool to propagate their fabrication and cultural manipulation. Computer programs have allowed for excessive and, in my opinion, inappropriate augmentation of skin texture and body type. That's just naming a couple. They take genetically gifted men and women with unusually well-proportioned parts, and then they create a whole new subspecies of human that not one of us will ever look like in our lifetimes. And I find this remarkably disturbing. And, and, and the, imagine this, okay, the, the cover model that, that, that uh, is looking in a mirror and the body's not the same one on the magazine. And she's having to compare that. No wonder we have eating disorders and body issues and psychological problems running rampant in the fashion model profession. But in addition, the amount of environmental destruction from this consumerism, which was inspired in part by the fashion industry, is unsustainable. And sadly, fashion also keeps child labor alive and well, but that's a whole other situation. We can get to that one later. The fashion line includes the claim that you, what you bought last season is no longer even fashionable, which is to say you're not beautiful anymore, or at least trendy, right? Of course, there are many layers to the fashion industry, but our focus is more on the manipulation of beauty perspective. So, how many times have you been in a social situation uh, where somebody negatively remarked on your sweater, your dress, your shoes, your jeans, or an accessory? I hear it and it happens to me all the time. So there you are, enjoying lunch with a group of your friends, and one of them titters, because they titter for some reason, oh, is that the last season of Louis? Well, mine is the latest from Paris, and I simply love, love, love it. Or, of course, you're a guy, right, in your office, and a coworker snickers at you, and it's like, oh, so, pleated pants, uh, did you uh, raid your grandpa's dresser to dig those up? LOL, you know, it's all about the flat front right now, I guess. So I submit this. That mentality is insane. But people sometimes dress that, uh, you know, a way that's awkward or mismatched or to a point of distracting that's inappropriate for a situation. But that's separate from fashion shaming or implying that somebody's not attractive because, you know, let's face it. And if Uncle Ned has a six inch flood going with his powder blue trousers, bright construction orange set of suspenders over a deep cut white v-neck thermal, but those are just my thoughts of beauty, and in part two, I, I will examine the three biggest lies in fitness.